and uh, while obviously everybody uh, does the rexis in different ways but um, this makes life very easy uh, you just leave that small indent on the cornea you can see the mark which it leaves this mark is there only for a couple of minutes and it's gone by the time you finish surgery but it gives you a very very nice uh, way to uh, get your rexis size and your uh, rexis uh, shape perfect and uh, costs almost nothing can be used for thousands of cases one device will last you it probably won't cost you more than 10 paisa per rexis at the end of the day but uh, this really works well and uh, here is to show you how the rexis marker compares to something like an image guided or a femto rexis you can uh, make the rexis and then check it with the virion i also use the virion but I feel that uh, the Rexus marker is a very, very elegant and simple way of doing it because you cannot have a Virion on every microscope and I do operate on two or three tables sometimes and this, I'm, what I'm showing you here is that using the Rexus marker, you can make the Rexus to the right size. Now sometimes you'll have uh, bigger size corneas and you'll have smaller size corneas, so you may not get an estimate of your exact size. So typically if your white to white is small, you may try to follow the Rexus thinking uh, based on the limbus size and you may get a very small Rexus and if you have a big cornea of 12.5 mm or something, you will get a bigger Rexus. So the Rexus marker also makes sure that you get the right size. You can see here that we are now checking the Rexus we made with the Virion and uh, the Virion tells us that we got it really well and at the end of the surgery you will be able to see that the overlap is pretty good and uh, this is the end of surgery. You can see the overlap of the Rexus made with the Rexus marker. It comes out really well. Now let's see a few situations where you can have problems with the Rexus. Now here we were making a Rexus and it suddenly started running out almost till the edge of the pupil here now. You can see the Rexus running out. Immediately go back, uh, put viscoelastic and uh, make sure that your chamber is not shallowing and then you can go with a micro Rexus forceps or some other similar instrument to try and recover that. And uh, now here we'll see a small maneuver which is really useful. I wanted to show this first because this is the maneuver which really helps you when you're in a situation. So here you can see the Rexus has run out. It's in a very peculiar, precarious situation and uh, patient is a little uncooperative looking around all over the place. But uh, we can go from the side port now uh, using a micro rexis forceps. This is a very nice Moria micro rexis forceps which you can use. And now you can see that I'm doing a counterintuitive maneuver. This is the Brian Little's technique. So rather than trying to pull it back, I'm pulling it away and the rexis comes back. So let me just take it back to you for you to just see it once again. You can just pull it in a direction which is counterintuitive and rather than trying to retrieve it by the usual way, you can pull it at 90 degrees and the rexis typically will come back. Uh, this maneuver is very, very useful when you're in a situation where the rexis is running out and please go back and try it. It works very well. Now, sometimes uh, you will be faced with an intumescent cataract and I try to decompress the lens. You can see here I'm going from a paracentesis with viscoelastic in the eye. As I try to aspirate, there is sudden shallowing and I end up causing a break in the rexis and uh, now this is a funny shaped uh, break in the rexis. I have managed to decompress the lens all right but this is a tripod kind of thing which has formed. It's broken in a triumvirate way, one here, one here, one here. So it's a very intumescent lens. Now I have to kind of try and retrieve it. So what I'm going to do is pick it up uh, from one point and try to run around all these three things. There's always the risk that this, uh, these will extend, either this one or that one. You have to make sure that you have good viscoelastic in the eye. I, at this point, it would be most productive to put in sodium hyaluronate and make sure that the chamber is, uh, the capsule is pushed back as much as possible. And uh, you always get much better control with the rexis forceps. And nowadays you have excellent uh, micro rexis forceps available, which are uh, much easier to maneuver inside the eye and they don't cause uh, shallowing of the chamber. They don't allow viscoelastic to come out. They can be used from the side port or the main port as you find convenient. And you can run around the rexis and come out of that. Now, there are other situations where you will find that the rexis tends to run away. So this is a smallish pupil and as I was trying to make the rexis to follow the virion overlay, it ran out and came under the iris over there. So I'm using a white tipped manipulator to check where it went. Now I'm going to do a viscomidriasis. So in that area where the rexis ran out, I'm injecting viscoelastic. You can see that the pupil has 
gone on to dilate a little bit there. Now, to increase visualization in the left hand, I'll use a white tipped spatula and uh, try to retrieve that rexis. So, this is another way you can do a bimanual technique and try to recover the rexis if it has run out and then complete it. Another situation where it was a smallish pupil and I do find these virion overlays irritating sometimes because they decrease your visualization as well uh, for the rexis, on the videos at least, if not in the microscope. Now again, the rexis tends to run out and now the, it's a funny situation because it's right under my main pot. So I will try to retrieve this, but my uh, I'm using the side pot to move the iris aside with the white tip spatula and I'm going to try and catch hold of this, but you can see that my two instruments are getting stuck one on each other. So then I try to go from the other side with the micro excess forceps, but the approach is not good. So I decide to put an iris hook here. So I, I have a small port here. I put the iris hook. Now I have good visualization. So you can always innovate uh, during the surgery and improvise during the surgery. Now I have a good view and I'll use the Brian Little's maneuver again. Count